Hello Athenians! To ensure a smooth running webinar for both the speaker and the audience, please be reminded of these following house rules. Number 1. For the entire duration of the webinar, kindly turn off or mute your microphones to avoid interrupting the presenter. Number 2. Be on time. Once you have joined the Zoom session, please refrain from leaving and attend the entire duration of the webinar. Number 3. To raise your queries, you may type them in the chat box of the platform you are using. Kindly refrain from posting comments unrelated to the topic. Number 4. The moderator will be acknowledging your questions and directing them to our speakers during the open forum. Number 5. When participating in the open forum, be mindful of your background and your background noise. Number 6. We will be releasing the link of the evaluation form at the end of the webinar. Number 7. Please note that we will only be issuing e-certificates to those who have registered, confirmed attendance, and completely filled out the evaluation form. Number 8. Use your real name and follow the prescribed format for proper documentation, if any. Number 9. Unless you are permitted by the organizer, please do not record any part of the webinar. And number 10, please give us a week to prepare your e-certificate to be sent via email. Thank you and enjoy the webinar. Hello there Athenians, welcome to your chosen alternative class program or ACP webinar or workshop this semester. Let me refresh your memory on what ACP is all about. The ACP is conducted every semester to provide the college students with formative opportunities outside of their regular classroom routine or daily schedule in support of the university's uniquely Jesuit educational goals. Carefully selected resource speakers from different fields of specialization are invited to share their knowledge skills inspire students to nurture their personal development and partake in social advocacies or causes. For the third online ACP during this pandemic, we continue with the theme, Cannonballs, Firing Up Dreams, Courage, Action. This theme is inspired by the conversion of St. Ignatius of Loyola founder of the Society of Jesus. Just as St. Ignatius was hit by a cannonball which altered his life and drew him to a greater calling, this ACP hopes to light up the university's call for students to have dreams, discern on how these dreams contribute to one's personal improvement and the common good, muster courage, and find ways to accomplish these dreams. To do this, ACP offerings are carefully chosen to be relevant to the current times, Recording in formative, progress. and mission-driven. The webinars and e-workshops hope to start a conversation on one's life in the pandemic, the changes and transitions, 
and important events like the national and local elections. The online sessions endeavor to facilitate personal and even community reflection and discernment. Who knows? These virtual activities could fire up meaningful cannonball moments in you, dear students. At the end of the webinars and e-workshops, the ACP hopes for the following objectives. First, acquire knowledge and or skills that are relevant to one's interest, talent, skill, passion, and advocacy. Second, relate or share the learning and insight gained from the topic or activity in conversation or dialogue and personal reflection. Third, examine the importance of one's interest, talent, skill, passion, and advocacy to the development of the society. And fourth, seek ways or opportunities by which the gained knowledge and skills can be further advanced and used for the benefit of the immediate organization, community, or larger society. Dream, have courage, take action. And don't forget to learn and have fun while we experience ACP Athenians. Welcome to your chosen alternative class program or ACP webinar or workshop this semester. Let me refresh your memory on what ACP is all about. The ACP is conducted every semester to provide the college students with formative opportunities outside of their regular classroom routine or daily schedule in support of the university's uniquely Jesuit educational goals. Carefully selected resource speakers from different fields of specialization are invited to share their knowledge, skills, and inspire students to nurture their personal development and partake in social advocacies or causes. For the third online ACP during this pandemic, we continue with the theme, Cannonballs, Firing Up Dreams, Courage, Action. This theme is inspired by the conversion of St. Ignatius of Loyola, founder of the Society of Jesus. Just as St. Ignatius was hit by a cannonball which altered his life and drew him to a greater calling, this ACP hopes to light up the university's call for students to have dreams, discern on how these dreams contribute to one's personal improvement and the common good, muster courage, and find ways to accomplish these dreams. To do this, ACP offerings are carefully chosen to be relevant to the current times, formative and mission-driven. The webinars and e-workshops hope to start a conversation on one's life in the pandemic, the changes and transitions, and important events like the national and local elections. The online sessions endeavor to facilitate personal and even community reflection and discernment. Who knows? These virtual activities could fire up meaningful cannonball moments in you, dear students. At the end of the webinars and e-workshops, the ACP hopes for the following object events and use for the benefit of the immediate organization, community, or larger society.
dream, have courage, take action. And don't forget to learn and have fun while we experience ACP Athenians. So I would like to start this ACP installment by asking all of you a question. And you can answer by accessing the Menti link that will be sent to our Zoom chat box. So ang question po natin ay, how are you feeling today? So a very loaded question, but I think it would be best that we know each other's current disposition before we start this webinar. So you can give your answers by accessing the Menti website by scanning the QR code flashed on the screen. It will be flashed on the screen. Okay. And the link that will be sent to our Zoom chat, uh, yes, to our Zoom chat box. So, ayan. Yan rin, po ati, yan rin po ang ating code. You can input that. So, let's try to look at our mentee. Okay. Let's try to look at our Menti um, word cloud. I think, let's try, um, can I ask the tech com to flash our word cloud sa, galing sa ating Menti? So, ayan. Ayan, guys. Um, we encourage everyone to participate in this kum brief kumustahan session. So, you can give your answers once again by accessing the link and inputting this code or inputting this code um, that is sent to our Zoom chat box. It's 4892744. Okay, meron na po tayong answers. Thank you so much sa ating mga participants. We have disappointed, sad, sick, anxious, um, frustrated. Okay. So fine, yes. Okay, my anxious, the anxious word is getting bigger. Okay. Sige. I think um, we're having frustrated again. I'm mad. Okay. Nang ating mga, you can see the consi uh, yung mga consistent na emotions. Yes, we have upset. So, okay, keep it coming, guys. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, to all the participants who are participating in this very brief activity. So, thank you. Um, I won't be reading everybody's answer na kasi parang nagigets ko na kung ano yung totality niya. I actually empathize with all of you. It is heartbreaking, to say the least. But this should not hinder us from continuing to fight for the values and ideals that we hold dear. In Bicol, I've witnessed how young people have spoken, volunteered, and expressed their utmost support for a brand of leadership that embodies compassion, courage,
courage, and integrity. The future of truth and justice does not stop in the elections, but instead, it should continue with us, the youth. Sabi nga sa isang kanta, tumindig at magsilbing liwanag sa dilim. Let us not forget what our parents, titas, titos, lolas, and lolos have fought for in the 1986 EDSA. Speaking of the EDSA revolution, did you know that one of the influential forces of the said revolution was the Roman, Roman Catholic Church? What is the role of the church and how is it separated from the state? Ever heard of render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's? What does this mean? Majus afternoon, Atenians. I am Daniel N. Filio, a BS Psychology student of the Ateneo de Naga University. And it is with great pleasure to welcome you all in this alternative class program entitled Understanding Church, State, and Politics, Rights, Laws, and Challenges. Before we start, let me just reiterate our house rules in our virtual room. Firstly, please mute your microphones in order to, to prevent distracting the speaker and our fellow participants. However, we highly encourage you to open your cameras if your internet permits you to do so. Second, if you have any questions or insights, feel free to send them through the link that will be sent to our Zoom chat box. We can see that one of our staff, Mary, has already sent um, the link. And um, just accomplish that G-form and we will be reading the questions during the open forum. We are also actually live in the Adnu Also YouTube channel. So sa ating mga YouTube viewers dyan, hello there. Don't hesitate to send your questions or insights in the live chat as we are sure to read them in the open forum. We will also be issuing e-certificates for this webinar. However, you need to stay throughout the event and accomplish the evaluation form that we will give at the end. With all those said and done, may I invite everyone now to settle down and ask for our Lord's intercession through an opening prayer. Prayer for our nation during the COVID-19 pandemic and the upcoming national and local elections. Almighty God, Lord of the universe and creator of everything, we come to you seeking your mercy, divine protection, and your will for us to confront the COVID-19 pandemic and the forthcoming national and local elections to choose the national and local leaders of our country. Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need, begging to halt the current COVID-19 pandemic healing for those afflicted, strength, courage, competence, compassion, and protection to health workers who care for them, eternal salvation and peace for those who die. And throughout this tribulation, may our families and communities be consoled and comforted by your merciful love. We pray that you guide the people task to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicine developed to end the pandemic in our country. We also pray that the forthcoming national and local elections may truly reflect your will, O Lord, who guides the destinies of nations. We beg you to deliver us, Lord, from coercion, intimidation, violence, and terrorism, from dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth, from bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud, from gullibility to the deceptive and blindness of perspective, from threats, intimidation, and perverse language. Lord our God, we beg you to give us the grace of a discerning heart in choosing the next set of national and local leaders in the forthcoming elections. Let our conscience be our ultimate norm. Let the common good be our highest goal. Let human dignity be respected all the time. Let the poor and the weak 
always have the priority. Let the care for creation be our utmost priority. Let solidarity guide the path of peace and development. Let genuine fear of God and love of neighbors guide those who seek public office. Shepherd of souls and savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others and grow in holiness. Guide our politics and guide our lives. May our political engagement for voters and candidates glory to your love and name and help us grow in holiness. Grant all the intercession of Inet, our Blessed Mother, and our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Thank you, Father Salarino Ignacio Reyes of the Society of Jesus for the editing of the prayer and Jack Ivan Audal for the recording. Now let us proceed to the highlight of this event, our talk proper. Let me take this opportunity to introduce to you our esteemed guest speaker. Our resource speaker is a member of the Society of Jesus and is the rector for the Jesuits in Cagayan de Oro City. He is currently the director of the Xavier University College Campus Ministries, as well as a professor of Xavier University College of Law, where he teaches agrarian reform, administrative law, administrative law labor law, criminal law, legal ethics, and human rights law. He also teaches legal ethics in the Ateneo de Zamboanga University College of Law and Theology and the Law and Legal Ethics in the Ateneo de Manila University Law School. He was the Executive Director of Simbahang Lingkod ng Bayan from 2008 to 2010 and was ordained to, the, to priesthood in 2011. Thereafter, he served as President of the Loyola College of Culion in Palawan until he entered Ateneo de Manila University School of Law in 2012. As a law student, he interned with the Ateneo Human Rights Center and the Jesuit Refugee Service in Cambodia. He became a member of the Philippine Bar on September 29, 2017. From November 2017 to March 2020, he served as a consultant to the Migrants and Refugees Section of the Holy See, with special attention to South and Southeast Asia. He has a BS degree in legal management, earned in 2000, and an MA in philosophy in 2006, both from the Ateneo de Manila University. He obtained his MA in Pastoral Ministry from the Ateneo as well as his Bachelor of Sacred Theology, graduating magna cum laude from Loyola School of Theology in 2011. He got his Juris Doctor degree from the Ateneo Law School in 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, our speaker for today's event is Father Ismael Jose, IJ, B. Chan Gonzaga. Let us give him a warm round of virtual applause. Afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you. Afternoon, po, Father. Thank you, Miss Daniel, for that introduction. Um, um, so, uh, so where are we? <laughs> so, thank you so much, dear students and uh, Atene Dinaga, for in the invitation. Allow me to just share screen so that um, hindi sumabog yung discussions natin this afternoon. No? After all that's been happening, uh, so. Um, I was tasked to give a talk on understanding church and politics, um, the rights, laws, and challenges. So as we begin, you know, uh, especially as we enter uncertain years ahead, here we are. I am sure we're all highly charged emotionally today. I saw the Mentimeter, but may, maybe just let us take a step back and recalibrate our sense, our our recalibrate our lenses. Let's just see, we're here, so we make us we, we might as well make the most out of our gathering this afternoon. Okay, um, so I know we've had our prayer, but still, let me lead you in a more um, 
zeroed in prayer, especially as we look at our our uh, our country today. Okay? So, uh, for the Catholics, let us make the sign of our faith in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a Sabbath prayer by Rabbi Jack Reimer. We cannot pray merely to you, O God, to end war. For we know that you have made the world in a way that people must find their own path to peace within themselves and with their neighbors. We cannot merely pray to you, O God, to end starvation. For you have already given us the resources with which to feed the entire world if we would only use them wisely. We cannot merely pray to you, O God, to root out prejudice. For you have already given us eyes with which to see the good in all people if we would only use them rightly. We cannot merely pray to you, O God, to end despair. For you already have given us the power to clear away slums and to give hope if we would only use our power justly. We cannot merely pray to you, O God, to end disease, for you have already given us great minds with which to search out cures and healing, if we would only use them constructively. Therefore, we pray to you instead, O God, for strength, determination, and willpower to do instead of just pray, to become instead of merely to wish. Amen. So my dear ACP participants, this afternoon, let me try to, to explain when we talk about church and state and politics. And we will use, uh, we will, if you'd allow me to lead you to understanding church and state relationships, uh, church and state relationship and its rights, laws and challenges by you, by explaining more in depth the separation of church and state principle as a tool when we now take a look at the church state political affairs while we still can <laughs> i want to put that caveat there while we while we still can because in the next few years we don't know we don't know what tomorrow will bring we don't know what tomorrow will bestow i'm not sure how the next few years will be like kai malay mo no biglang Galing pala ni BBM, biglang binigay balik lahat ng pera, 203 billion plus plus, di ba? Di everybody happy. Pag hindi, eh, <laughs> kanya-kanyang tago. But I'm just kidding, no? Um, but just for this, you know, um, let me be honest outright, my dear students. Um, it's so the, it was, as I was finalizing my presentation this afternoon, I found it really difficult. Um, because I don't know where to start in terms of how, as church, we have, I guess this is also a failure of church. Um, we have not been consistent. Um, what we have seen in the past, in this election, when many of our church leaders actually took a stand, we have seen that uh, something's wrong. And I guess a big part of that we need to understand this of our making. Um, as Catholic Church, in a country that is 80 plus percent Catholic, we have not been consistent. We shepherds have become wolves in sheep's clothing. We have hurt people. And I guess frustration has just really come to fore. And uh, a sadness in my part is that um, we have mission areas here in Bukidnon, Kulyon, and still our people voted in a different manner. No matter how we tried. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe because they look at us and looking at them, not they do not see themselves as our friends, or they do not see us as their friends. Something has to be done there, and I guess that is our that is our mistake. 
That being said, as we discuss this afternoon, I want to discuss, as we talk about understanding church and state in politics, I will discuss this, especially my dear students, for two main reasons. And I hope you take it to heart. First reason is because you are in Ateneo. We are a Jesuit, Catholic, and Filipino university. These are not just some empty cute nouns. These are descriptive words, pregnant with meaning and tradition. We are Jesuit, Catholic, Filipino. These words are pregnant with meaning and tradition. Standing upon a bedrock of blood, sweat, and tears of Athenians who came before us. Your being here should show you what we are fighting for. And more importantly, why we are fighting. This is an activism rooted in the very person of Jesus himself. He who did not decide based on personalities, but on principles. Our faith must compel us to action. Those who say that the church should just keep to the churches and pray, I'll say to you, you do not understand the Catholic Christian faith at all. At all. So as you would say here in Visaya, here in Cagayan de Oro, I mean based in Savior U, as they would say in Visaya, wag kang pataka. Because if you say that the Catholic Church should just stay in our walls of the church and pray, then you do not know, you do not understand the Catholic Christian faith at all. The Catholic Christian faith, that is a bedrock of your Ateneo education. If you don't understand that at all, okay lang, basta huwag kang pataka. Second is because I want us to, to re-examine, re-evaluate, and make sure you, our students, our hope, our future can help lead us in the next generations to that courage that is ask of our faith. That we do not hide behind wrong conceptions of the principle of church and state and to be able to think. Because, you know, um, the difficulty is that many times mga Sobra tayo ka bright, eh, no? We literally try to understand the separation um, in, church of, in church and state as a separation in its uh, literal word. When the separation of church and state is a very principle nuanced. It is an, a principle nuanced principle of law. <laughs> um, kaya nga when, when then spokesperson Panelo tried to to you know, just twist that so that it will be to the advantage of, of his own interpretation. It was so hurting to hear him, him who is, a, who is supposed to be a lawyer, to twist that when he actually really knows what it means because separation of church and state is a technical, defined, nuanced principle in law. So again, I would say, wag kang pataka. Because we're here, so might as well for me to be able to help you understand so that when people begin to quote this as if they're quoting as an expert, we are able to tell them, wag kang pataka. That's not what it means. And third, <laughs> and the, the third lang for me, pasagi ko lang to, no? because this is a personal pet peeve of mine. Teka lang. Bakit pa natin inaangat yung separation of church and state pagdating sa katoliko simbahan? Bakit tayo lang? So then you realize there's something something wrong there. But let's let's try to go let's try to go through. Um, and uh, um, if I speak this way, my dear students, I'm not angry. I'm just passionate. I'm more I so um, I can, I get carried away most of the time. My target is to finish within twenty or thirty to thirty five minutes so that we'll have a bigger time for open forum so that it will, we can clarify things in a conversation manner. Okay. So. Why do, um, so where does the church, how does the church engage in society? We fought for farmers' rights. We marched for farmers. 
we we fought for what was needed. You all know the story of the Sumila farmers as they marched in 20 in 2007. We fought for the dignity of the human person when we tried to fight the difficulty of um, ed- ed- extrajudicial killings and, and the, the tyranny and the seeming dictatorship when law was weaponized against individual persons. Can you imagine all of a sudden at the tail end of, of, of this administration, you have uh, all this retraction of the accusations against uh, um, Leila de Lima after what, six years, in prison, without trial. That 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 is just that is that is political will wielded negatively. And that's so why I'll just ask you, dear students. So, what's the difference? <laughs> what's the difference between the first? What's the difference of the three slides? I mean, the three pictures. What's the difference? And all of a sudden, why pick on this? <laughs> uh, you know, I like the comment a few weeks ago. Um, it was attributed to one of the bishops uh, when when he he, um, he, he said that nagindorsi yung nagindorsi ang INC, nagindorsi kibuloy, nagindorsi ang Jesus is Lord movement ni Villanueva. Wala namang ingay. E bakit pag yung mga obispo at mga pare nag separation of church and state again. Bakit? Isn't INC a church? So anong, anong pagka, anong tingin natin sa kanila? Kulto? Nakaka-insulto naman yata tayo sa kanila kung gano'n yung pagtingin natin. Eh yung Jesus is Lord movement ni Kipolo, I mean ni, ni, ni Pastor Villanueva, hindi pala yan simbahan? Eh di, naka, parang nakaka-insulto naman tayo sa mga uh, faithful of the Jesus Lord movement. I will not, I will not just go and keep away, but diba? so why, why, why? Hindi ba sila simbahan? Ganun ba yung kaliit ang pagtingin natin sa kanila? Lalo ito, na ang simbahan katoliko lang, kaya sa simbahan katoliko tayo mag-iingay? Shows us immediately that even the very concept is raised, not because they don't understand the principle, but because it is convenient to weaponize and use for self-interest. Alam naman natin yan. Dear students, I'm sure you all know about this. But still, it's nice to fully understand the principle so that when you are asked or if there may mga pataka, then you can answer them and you answer them based on proper facts. Kasi baka, pati naman tayo biglang ma, 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 para ma-accuse ng um, fake news. So let us put, hopefully, let us work on proper foundations for our um, discussion. So when trolls tell you ang hilig kasing makialam ng katoliko sim katoliko simbahan sa gobyerno may separation of church and state nga sabihin mo kagad wag kang pataka because understand first the true meaning of the separation of church and state from the Philippine constitution itself and the basic principle is lodged on is lodged in article 2 section 6 when it says the separation between church and state shall be inviolable. So let's unpack that motherhood statement. Because we need to understand, it's like, you know, when we, we try to read the Constitution, it's like reading the Bible. You cannot take it out of context. You can never read the Bible out of context. Okay. Kaya nga, di ba, gaya nga scary ang mga fundamentalists who would insist on the black, black and whiteness of the Bible. Segue konti, di ba? Para for you to understand precisely what I'm talking about. Because you will see that when you read the Constitution, you cannot read it out of context, just like as you cannot read the Bible out of context. So that let me try to let me try to be very vivid about it for you, dear student. Like in the Bible, you cannot read it as black and white fundamentalist style that at is as if every word there is the gospel truth and you take it out of context. You cannot. Why? Because I let me give you a very complete example. E paano kung gusto mo talaga i-read siya talaga ng 
ng napaka-literal. Eh paano kung one day pagbukas mo ng Biblia, pagturo mo ng finger mo, ang nakita mong linya nakasulat doon ay put a rope around your neck and put it with a stone and throw yourself to the sea. Gagawin mo yun? Or paano kung may nagsabi, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Eh malamang I'm sure lahat tayo wala ng right hand ngayon kasi lahat naman tayong makasalanan. Sino ba ditong hindi? Di ba? You cannot read it out of context. The Constitution is the same. You cannot read it out of context. So we need to go back to Article 2. Sorry, medyo para lang klaro sa atin when we talk about understanding principles in its proper context. You will see that Article 2 of the Constitution of which this line that says separation of church and state shall be inviolable is simply a statement of principles and policies. They need to be enfleshed further, either made into concrete law so that they can be further defined and pwede siyang maaksyonan, it becomes actionable. And for the principle of separation of church and state, it is enlarged further in your Article 3, the Bill of Rights. Because this is more universal. So, Article 2, Section 6 is now made more concretely palpable in your Bill of Rights, Article 3 of the Constitution still. And what does it say? I'm using the 1987 Constitution, pero sige lang, dear students, habang nandyan pa, kasi baka in a few years' time, wala na yung 87 Constitution. But habang nandyan pa, sige na lang, labanan natin, paglaban natin. There are two, there are, um, in, art, in, in the Philippine Constitution, when you talk about church and state um, relationship, you're looking at Article 3, Section 5. Okay? Article 3, Section 5 is the fundamental pre premise of the very relationship between church and state. Or the other, many people say the separation, but I'd rather say it actually grounds the relationship between church and state. Okay? And here there are, the, there are two principles, what we call the twin principles of non-establishment and freedom of expression. Non-establishment, freedom of expression. Um, non-establishment principle says, and that is why your sentence 1A of Article 3, Section 5, the first sentence, first part says, no law, there shall no law in the country that will be passed respecting an establishment of religion. Meaning, hindi ka pwede, walang, hindi pwedeng ang Kongreso magpasa ng batas na sasabihin na um, the Catholic faith is the state religion. You cannot do that. That is, a, that is, that goes contrary to the principle of non-establishment. So section 1A of the Constitution of Article 3, Section 5 says, there no law shall be passed regarding the establishment of one religion. And then you have Section 1B, a continuation of that first sentence of Article 3, Section 5 that says, nor a law that will prohibit the free exercise thereof. That is why your second principle, the freedom of expression. And if you try to understand them together, section, sentence 1A simply means government is prohibiting from establishing a state-sponsored religion, while sentence 1B is the government is prohibited from preventing people the free exercise of their religion. That is the twin principle of your um, of your Section 5, Article 3 of the Constitution, the twin principle of non-establishment and freedom of expression, freedom, uh, free exercise of, um, of faith. Now, the second sentence of, of Section 5, Article 3 says, government is prohibited, government is prohibited from making any discrimination, preference, or support to any religion or faith. The free exercise and enjoyment of religious profession and worship without discrimination or preference shall forever be allowed. 
And sentence three says, no religious test shall be required for the exercise of civil and political rights. Meaning government is prohibited from using religion as a test so that he or she can exercise any fundamental right of citizenship, political, economic, civil, or society, or social. So why am I talking about this, dear students? Because in a general overview, the relationship between the church and the state, which is lodged in Article 3, the Bill of Rights, especially Section 5, is generally a prohibition on the state. Again, the principle that very nuanced principle of separation of church and state is a prohibition against the state, never against the church. It is a prohibition on the state. It is a protection for each citizen. The Article 3, the Bill of Rights, my dear students, our Bill of Rights, the entire Article 3 of our Constitution all those sections there are protection for the citizen against the state. Okay. The principle of separation of church and state, hindi mo mahanap yan elsewhere except as it is generally lodged in Article 3 of the Constitution. Okay. And Article 3 of the Constitution is about the Bill of Rights. And uh, well, the Bill of Rights is a generally a prohibition against the state because it's a protection for each citizen. Logical flow ulit. Para lang malinaw, dear students, kasi baka naman maraming mga pilosopo. Logical flow in terms of law. The principle of church and state relationship is lodged in your constitution, particularly Article 3, Section 5. What is Article 3? Article 3 is Bill of Rights. What is the Bill of Rights? It is the protection of the citizen against the state. Ergo, the principle of church and state is against the state, not the church. I will give you a more concrete example na hindi uh, religion. In, in Section 1, Section 1 of Article 3 is what you call the due process provision. That no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of the law. That is a prohibition from against the state, not the individual. So Article 3, Bill of Rights, Section 1 says that the state cannot deprive a citizen of life, property, liberty without due process. Section 2 of Article 3, the Bill of Rights says that the freedom of speech shall not be um, clipped or hindered. Section 6 of Article 3 is the freedom of movement. A citizen cannot be refused to be able to move or travel or move around. That is why Section 5 specifically deals with a citizen's right to practice his or her faith. However, you also need to consider that in, in that very section, it is appreciated that not all Filipinos are Catholics. We have a diversity of religion. And so that's, that is why since we are a democratic republic, still, so far, putting high premium on equality and equity, the state must refrain from favoring one faith over another, from favoring one religion over another. That is why Section 5 has been placed there, to prohibit the state from using religion to unduly or unjustly favor one set of people over others. This includes allowing people of whatever faith tradition to practice their faith in rituals without hindrance to practice their faith in rituals without stoppage or without um, discrimination, except, except if it infringes on the rights of others. Kung gusto mo mas balahurang pananalita, we will say, I do not, I don't care. I do not care about what you believe. But I sure care how you express it. 
I don't care what you believe. You believe in aliens. You believe in whatsoever. I don't care. That's yours. Well, basa ka ng trip. But I sure care how you express it. Kasi pag sinabi na ng alien sa iyo na magpumatay ka ng tao o kainin mo ako, ay that, that is an infringement on my right. <laughs> There I will have to have a care. Freedom of expression, but always within the bounds of what is law, what is legal and lawful. Other um, relevant provisions in the Constitution, you will have, um, again, simply to show you, you have a further enfleshment of that. You have section um, 29 of Article 6. Article 6 in the Constitution pertains to the legislative branch of government. That the national budget, when it is passed by Congress, there is a prohibition that no public fund should be allocated to specific religious purpose. Kaya nga nung isang beses, may nag-iinarte na, oh, bakit yung Santo Papa dumating? Gumastos ang, ang Philippine government ng limang million, pe, five million pesos uh, for the welcome of the, pap- of, of the papal visit. Um, isn't that a separation of church and state? Gusto ko sabihin, again, wag kang pataka. Remember that the Pope is not just a religious leader. He is a head of state. And what you, when we ask him to come as a head, as a head of state, it is the same as, let's say, President Duterte goes to the Vatican. He is also accorded the same diplomatic courtesy precisely because he's head of state. So, knock-knock, wag lang pataka. But there are also those examples when you have elected officials sending food to the church. Okay? Problema nito, ang dami sa atin nagpa-violate, but we don't understand, pero kinakayaan. Ba? What, what are examples? Mayor, fiesta ng, ng, fiesta ng bayan, palitsyon ka naman. Si Mayor, sige, padala ko ng sampung litsyon. Okay lang naman kung galing sa pera ni Mayor. Ang problema, silipin nyo. Kasi may official receipt, yung sampung litsyon, charge to the city. Ah, that is not possible. That should not be possible. Okay? Now, another one is that you have there under your Comelec law of the Article 9 uh, subsection C on the Commission on Elections, it says there that a religion or church cannot be registered as a political party. Pero, as always, my dear students, ang daming, be, ang daming opportunity to circumvent that law. A, a religion or church cannot be registered as a political party. That's why you cannot say the Catholic Church is a political party or a party list. No, but makita mo, there are so many ways of, of circumventing it. The buhay party list. Silipin, sino ang mga nominees? Pamilya Villarde. Or Sibak. Yung Citizens Battle Against Corruption. Silipin mo, J, that's a J, Jesus is Lord movement ni Eddie Villanueva. There are so many ways of circumventing still. Well, again, uh, that, um, <laughs> such is life of a democratic country. Okay. So let me again just simply put this into perspective. The principle of separation of church and state has nothing to do with the church. It is an absolute prohibition against the state to make sure the state will not play favorites by virtue of faith or belief system. It is a protection for an individual that just because I am Catholic or just because I am Muslim, I will be discriminated against. The state is prohibited precisely from playing favorites. Ganun lang kasimple yan. Okay. But, but since we're here, so, that being said, class, the bigger question is, what does Holy Mother Church say? Because okay. if we're going to talk about church and state relationship and kasi gusto niyo malaman dahil ang ingay ng katoliko simbahan ang daming mga pare obispo lumabas mga madre nagsitakbuhan ng house to house etc ano, ano what does holy mother church say 
we go to Catholic social teachings. And in the Catholic social teachings, the Catholic social teachings, uh, dear students, is uh, that is a compilation of papal decrees, encyclicals, we call them, that the Pope releases periodically that allows for the church as magisterium headed by the Pope to actually give uh, teachings, especially when it comes to the relationship between the church and political affairs or uh, countries or societal affairs. As early as Pachimin Terrace by Pope John XXIII in, in 1963, he actually states there that the dignity of the human person involves the right to take an active part in public affairs. A Catholic cannot be a fence sitter. A Catholic, if he must be true to his faith, must contribute to the common good of the public as a citizen. In the same encyclical, it is said, once again, we exhort our children to take an active part in public life. Doesn't mean you have to be a public uh, officer or an elected or appointed officer, but you have to take an active part in public life. Meaning, hindi ka pwedeng nakakulong sa kwarto sa bahay mo. You have to actually relate to people, fight for people's rights, because it's also fighting for your own right as well. To contribute towards the attainment of the common good for the entire human family. In, in the Second Vatican Council, especially Gaudium et Spes, you have it there that citizens should remember that it is our duty and right to contribute to the progress of our community. If we are to be true to our faith, we have both right and, and duty to make sure we contribute to the progress of our community. Same document also says that citizens should cultivate a generous and loyal spirit of patriotism without narrow-mindedness so that it will be for the welfare of the entire human family. Christians must be conscious of their specific and proper role in the political community, shining example of their sense of responsibility and dedication to the common good. Again, an exhortation for engaged good citizenship. Recently, in more stronger words, Pope Francis would say in Evangelic Gaudium in 2013, that people in every nation enhance the social dimension of their lives by becoming or acting as committed and responsible citizens. Responsible citizenship, I would say, engaged citizenship is a virtue and here, strongly, he says, participation in political life is a moral obligation. So if we are talking about the Catholic faith, and I believe this is also so for all the other faiths, if you want to be true to what you believe in, you have to participate in political life. Politics does not necessarily mean just elections or being leader. Political life meaning how you deal with the, with the polis. That is a moral obligation. Politics is a vocation and one of the highest forms of charity, especially when it seeks the common good. So my dear students, you are probably wondering now, so, bakit ang daming kaguluhan? Bakit ang daming ganap? Ang daming mga pangkakagulo sa Facebook man yan, social media, whatever. What, what's the big deal? Why do we still get confused by the separation of church and state? When it, is, it should be clear that it's just against the state. Bakit ginagawa siyang malaking issue natin? Because in canon law, there is a prohibition against us, clergy. But again, again, 
in canon law, the provision, the prohibition is under canon law number 287, paragraph 1. Clerics are always to foster the peace and harmony based on justice. They are not to have an active part in political parties or in political affairs unless it is for the promo it is for the to protect the rights of the church or the promotion of the common good but even there my dear students the prohibition of canon law is only against us clerics we the ordained ministry the prohibition of canon law again ulitin ko is only against us clergy we clergy who are the ordained ministers meaning ang mga madre, mga Lasal brothers, they who are not ordained, they do not have this prohibition. Because the prohibition is only against the ordained ministers. So you will ask, Dave, bakit ang daming mga pare obispo nag-endorse? Because I would always insist that last line on the slide, on the screen that you see, is that exception. We cannot have an active part in political affairs except if the promotion of common good requires it. Are we in a time of so much difficulty that the common good required it? I say yes. Many of us say yes. Many of the other priests did not. So they did not engage. Many of us said it was a time and so we engaged. Sadly, sadly, there's a problem, but again, but even with this, this is only church law. Hindi walang makukulong dahil ang salita kami. Dahil under civil law, there is no prohibition against us. Ang sinasabi ko nga parati dyan, hindi porket naging pare ako, hindi na ako Pilipino. Okay? At bilang Pilipino, karapatan at obligasyon ko ang maninindigan kung ano ang tama at kung anong dapat kong gawin para sa bayan kong mahal. So let me end with this slide kasi so that we'll have more time in our open forum if you ask, especially in terms of the, of the very relationship between the church and the state. What are we doing? I'm sitting on a fence. But why? <laughs> I get to keep more friends this way. Doesn't it hurt? Nah. I just feel numb. But I'm used to it. Problema sa atin, yun yung marami sa atin. Fence sitters. And we're just numb to it. But wait, my dear students, before I end, share one last slide. Ihising it ko to. Many of us may feel dejected as I've seen in your Mentimeter. So let me end with this, dear students. From the ashes, the phoenix rises. You're just beginning. The road to 2025 and 2028 will be long and steep. But as the ashes settle in 2022, the phoenix will rise. We are just beginning. We do not lose hope. Because as church, we will stay the course. Hopefully, we all stay the course. Let me end there. And then so that if there are those who have questions, let us engage in conversations. Hopefully, I will be able to answer some of your questions or your own reflections. I also wish to be able to learn from you and to hear your thoughts and your own appreciation because it also will help me a lot as well. So maraming salamat. Uh, Diyos Mabalos, dear students. Diyos Mabalos, Father, and thank you very much for such an interesting and thought-provoking presentation. Um, at least we have now clarified or nagkaroon po kami ng clarification kung ano nga po ba ang separation of church and state. Kasi nga po, um, if I may read um, one of the sentiments that were shared by one of the ACT staff, um, legit daw, legit daw, na nag, ano po, nagkaharon po ng 
or isa po sa mga ginagamit na rhetorics or arguments ng mga fake news or disinformation from the BBM side is that um, ang ibang response nila sa Catholic endorsement ni Lenny kundi church and state. Um, pero nung i-raise nyo raw po yung sa, uh, kay Kibuloy, either ang sasabihin po nila is biased ang media tapos pinklawan na. So makikita po na talaga natin na um, nagkaharon po ng um, misconception and you're using the concept in a ano in their favor or they're using the concept in their favor. So thank you so much Father for giving us the that enlightening um that enlightenment. So um at this point I'm sure that everyone has learned a lot about um the separation of church and state. But before we proceed with the open forum, let us have a quick game um, and an opportunity for you to win a prize. So yeah, and, um, let's have a quick icebreaker. So for the mechanics, the title of this game before I move to the mechanics is four, pi four pictures and one word. The mechanics are the following. First, we will be presenting four pictures on our screen, which relate to the webinar talk. Second, Participants must guess what word the pictures describe by writing their answer or sending their answer to the chat box. The first participant to send the correct answer after the MC, that's me, go, go signal, and the go line that will be sent to the chat box by one of our ACT staff will win this game. So the winner will receive a GCash prize and you will be mess you will be messaging Miss Mary Charlene. Thomas on Facebook Messenger to claim your prize. So, um, ready na po ba sa ate, ang ating mga participants sa quick icebreaker na ito? Can I see the heart reacts? Ayan. Ayan. Thank you so much, guys. I feel like everyone is prepared. Okay. Ready na po ba tayo? So, okay. Let's first look at the four pictures. First round. Okay, you now see the picture, and we will be sending the go signal in three, two, one, go. Election, election. Okay, we have election, election. Sige, um, let's try to. Okay, let's try to know if election is the right answer. So okay, let's. Republic, we have okay. The answer is politics. Okay, thank you guys. Um, sa pag participate, I think nobody got the correct answer. So let's try another, um, another round. So okay, for the second round. So these are the pictures. Um, give your answers in three, two, one, go. Okay, we have justice, justice, democracy. I think I need uh, democracy, democracy, justice, democracy. Okay, um, I think yun na muna. Uh, let's try to look at rights. Okay, ano, ano nga ba ang tapang answer? Okay, democracy. Ayan, I think the first person who got it right is I think I need the help of our staff. Can you can someone can someone please tell me kung sino yung ating first winner? Okay, congratulations Moisa Padin. Okay, hi Moisa, sabi ni Al. Congratulations. Um you will receive a GCash prize and for you to claim it. Yes, hello. Congratulations. Um, you will receive your GCash prize uh, by messaging Miss Mary Charlene Thomas on Facebook Messenger. Again, congratulations! So, ayan, thank you so much to our participants, sa mga nag-participate at, na at nag-send ng kanilang mga answers. So, at this point, we will now have our open forum. This is your time to share your insights and questions to our resource speaker. You can do so by accessing the link and accomplishing the G form that is sent to our Zoom chat box 
or in the live comment section of our for our YouTube view, YouTube viewers. You can also press the raise hand feature on your Zoom screens located at the bottom um, so for you to be recognized and so that you can ask your question or give your insights yourselves. So ayan guys. Uh, nandito na po, sinand na ulit sa ating Zoom chat box ang link for the questions. But Hello everyone. So I believe that our um, guest uh, speaker has, uh, or rather our host has experienced technical difficulties. So I will just be our temporary um, host for today. Uh, okay, so Ati Dani has already returned. So I will now give back the floor to her. Thank you, Mary. Um, I am experiencing internet connectivity issues because it is raining here. <laughs> Okay, um, but don't worry, I'm here again, once again. Um, now, going back to the flow of our program, let's now welcome Mr. Jerwin Villacruz um, for our first reactor. Mr. Jerwin? Okay. Hi, Jerwin. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Jerwin Roy R. Villacruz. I'm a third year BSA leader management student at Ateneo de Nal University, and I'd like to thank Father IJ for the very insightful talk on state church and politics. Uh, we really need this in these trying times of the Philippine history. Um, for my part, I think I would have to ask a um, few questions from Father IJ because we would like to um, utilize the expertise of Father IJ for this talk. Uh, first, Father, is um, I'm really curious about whether does the church still have an actual influence over the Philippine political system, given its endorsement of Vice President Lenny Robredo, yet the turnout is what is it was what it is in the status quo. Okay. Kala ko two questions, sir. So, ito muna. Okay. Yes. Sir. Um, Sure. Uh, as I said at the, at the thank you for that journal. No? Um, as I said in the at the start, a big part of this is really a need for introspection, sa atin as church, uh, because as I'm, I've been the past two days, I've been really trying to understand how how come it's been that. And, and if you notice, that has been the trend even even prior, even uh, during President Duterte's election. The church already came out not as strongly as this time, but kita natin na wala eh. Didn't, didn't work. This time, we all went out. All out, no. Not all out. 80% out. And then we realized, we realized, wala. Why? Why is that? Um, where, where, where is the church? To be honest, it's not, hindi sa, pag hindi sa pagpubuhat ng bangko. But to be honest, where, 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 where do you find most of the church, most of the people, of the, our, our priests and, and, and religious? They're in the peripheries. Um, we have shelters. We have, um, we have feeding programs. We have shelters for um, abused women, trafficked women. We're, we're the ones who, who, who are there when there are calamities, there are uh, pag augment, augment um, problems of uh, pag hindi naabot ng government assistance that were there. And yet we are not, why are we not being believed? When we tell them, please, this is for your, we are doing this for your own, we are doing this because we think this is what's right. But to be honest, I have no um, full answer for that except 
uh, let me give you my two cents worth so far. I'm still processing also myself and the entire you know, the entire happening. No, but to, let me just tell you. Uh, let me share what my own take for the past so far. One, um, we go to the to to the peripheries, but the peripheries do not see us as friends. They see us as seeing them simply as apostolates. So you have people in the peripheries looking at us, and saying we are we are not looked at as as friends. We are, parang kung ako in the periphery, may pare na tumutulong sa amin. Hihingi ako ng tulong sa pare, at isipin ko I am entitled to the help of I am your apostolate. I do not see myself as your friend. And so when you say something, ang, ang dealings natin just simply as ako beneficiary, apostolate lang ako ninyo. So wala tayong relationship. When you tell me something that I do not believe at the start, hindi, sarado na ako. Kasi hindi naman ano eh. Pero kasi hindi ko makita na kaibigan tayo. Kasi ang tingin ko sarili ko, um, apostolate mo lang. And saan nang gagaling yan? Nang gagaling pa rin sa perspektibo na and you will see that that is to, uh, a big part of the blame is from the church side because yan yung naipalalabas na natin na like impression. And how many of us really are there precisely also because that's what we, we give them we, we go them but we don't even we don't work with them. We we just simply, ganun kasi di nila malapas. Kasi at the end of the day, ang pare, madre, tatakbo kami sa comfort of our conventos. Ang karamihan sa ating tao in the peripheries, mahirap pa rin. So, o oh nga, si father tutulog, pero si father, ang ganda ng kotse. Ganda ng kumbento. And, and so you will see, even from our end, there is a disconnect. And we have, and this election has given us that very concrete data. Uh, pinamukha talaga na hindi naniniwala sa amin. Dahil hindi nila makita na para sa kapakanan nila ang ginagawa natin. And that actually, the burden is on us because we have not communicated. Because then the question is, really, baka nga naman talaga totoo hindi nga naman talaga tayo nakikipagkaibigan. And that's a very, very strong data. That, that's one. And that's why for me, that's why the, the, the moral ascendancy of the church, poof, wala. Because we've been very inconsistent. Very inconsistent uh, in that matter. Um, but at the same time, at the same time, not to really put down just the church, no, but at the same time you will see that um, it's also a cultural barrier that we need to overcome. At doon ang simbahan hindi pa nakaka nakaka take root. Sinasabi natin, di ba, when remember that when the Catholic faith came to our islands, it came together with the sword. Because the conquest was always the sword and cross. The cross came with the sword. The church came in also through the subjugation of the of the colonialized colonization perspective of Spain. So even the church and the faith is received not from a reception of love, but from a reception of fear and convenience. Until we break through that and see that our faith is a faith that is genuine, this has shown us that we have not entered into the culture of the Filipino and we have not alleviated the culture of the Filipino to something sana far more encompassing. My take. <laughs> I may be wrong. I'm not an anthropologist, but <laughs> um, my own take. Thank you so much, Father IJ, for your response on my first question. Um, my second question po is, um, well, I'm one of those believers that the spirit of the law 
and not the text of the law which should be controlling in terms of um interpreting the constitution but i'm just curious father how do you respond to those text textualists who believe that the rule the rule, who believe on the rule on statutory construction that if the text of the law is clear there's no need to construe it as per article 2 section 6 the rule is that the separation of the church and state is inviolable and there is no prescription whether the provision is to be provided by law and therefore it is in the inviolability is something that is mandatory how do you respond to that father uh, how do you respond to that textualist interpretation of the constitution? Even in the, uh, Jer, I agree with you in terms of the spirit of the law, but there's a caveat kasi to that. The spirit of the law will only, will only be looked at, will only be looked at if there is a conflict. It is a hard law, but it is the law. So what is there pag, that is why well, that's the, that's why you have the you have the courts to interpret. And normally the courts will go to the spirit because it's there's a there's a kumbaga sa tagalog pangarap pa lang yan. Kailangan yan ibaba to something tangible that you can that you can that can be actionable. So that is why your section 2 they're all just an uh, a declaration of our wishes and policies and hopes. So when you say separation of church and state is inviolable, that is uh, under section two. That is but a that is but a dream, and that dream, in as it is precisely lodged in the constitution, is lodged again as a as a hopefully as a north star, as a direction setting for the state in how it should be able to create laws for that direction. It's a direction setting for the state. So mas, kahit sabihin mo it is something that is lutang, it is up there, even if you say, ah, hindi pala siya actionable. No, it's, it can be because it actually charts the direction. But you will ask, whose direction is it charting? The, the direction of those in power, the, the charting of the direction of the country and its leaders. Is it legal and morally right for the Catholic Church and civic organizations to, at this point in time, lead EDSA tree, given that BBM is a convicted criminal, is from a family of plunderers, and allegedly he won, although there are reports that it had been achieved fraudulently. Is it legal and proper uh, for the sake of It is nothing philosophical or moral. Legal ethics is, is uh, based on code, legal codes. Um, we swear that a lawyer has a fourfold duty to society, to the profession, to the courts, to the client. And always our duty is to make sure that we do not, we do not compromise the integrity of um, constitutional commissions or of institutions. Uh, and so, as a lawyer, if I'm going to be asked, I will also have to say, we cannot move on mere suspicions. I need to work on something that can be defensible in the courts. I need something factual. I cannot... Um, I cannot throw away the rule of law because if I do that, then I open the floodgates. If I do that now, what will stop others from doing it 10 years from now in a wrong sense? Okay. Even, even if we think we are legally, we think we are morally obliged, we have also to see that law, law is the last vanguard for order in society. Break down law, anarchy will follow. And if I will now disregard law because of something that may be a mere suspicion, I open the floodgates because then that becomes a precedence. Then when in the future I'm in the one in power and then people rise against me, 
And I will say, Uy, you're not following the rule of law. Ibabalik yan sa akin. Bakit? Nung 10 years ago ba, ikaw nag-follow ka ng rule of law? Hindi. Then we open floodgates that we cannot control anymore. Um, legally speaking, that has been the difficulty. That's why for me, the difficulty in the impeachments of, of Corona, Sereno, we open the floodgates of making Olympus mortal. The courts, Olympus should have stayed inviolable. But we op- we, we allowed for that. So that's that's the same example sa, ako, sa, sa akin na you, you, we protect that from a legal perspective. We cannot just, without something that we can work on factually, it will be difficult to, to go that way. Um, and for me, even in terms of moral obligation, that's the other, that's, it's going to be the same thing. I've been praying over it the past two days, morally speaking. I'm not sure... I'm not so sure there's cheating. What I am sure of is that we've lost our people. Um, we, the youth, you, the youth, you've mobilized. But the DNA that, that voted, and if you notice, it's DNA voted, but also A voted. Grabe. Look at look at the situation in our country. Here in Dinagat, Kaka, Attorney Kaka Bagao, Governor Kaka Bagao. Grabe. What the, the entire life just given to the island? Her, her dedication, her service, her, her selflessness, her dedication. She and her entire staff wiped out. Ah, look. The Eclios are back in power. You will see many pockets in the local elections of the same pattern. The privileged few have regained power. So I don't think there's a national cheat. I think something just went wrong in our psyche. And I think I have to swallow the bitter pill that... Most part of the country, I don't know. Kaya nga po, heart out to region five and six. You stood, you stood your ground. Ay, ay, ko, talagang bangis. But uh, I don't know what the rest of the country. So morally speaking as well, hindi ko rin pa masyadong makatapak dyan eh. Kasi... Kasi hindi ko rin makita na pwede kong sabihin na tayo lang ba yung tama? Baka hindi. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's sorry for my lengthy answer for that year. Uh, thank you so much, Father IG, for that very insightful and informative discussion. We are heavily grateful for your um responses and we are heavily grateful for your expertise. Thank you so much for um thank you thank you so much Mr. Jerwin Villa Cruz for that for the wonderful insights. Um, we will we also have Miss Bea Bianca Oviedo also a student of the Ateneo de Naga University. However, she won't be able to deliver her reaction um, live. She just sent me the mess, um, her reaction, and I will be reading them for everyone to um, hear. So hello and good afternoon to everyone in the meet right now, especially to our resource speaker today, Father Ismael Chan Gonzaga. My name is Bea Bianca B. Oviedo, a second year BS psychology student. And today, I will be giving my reaction for today's webinar. When we were asked to choose for an ACP topic, I had decided to choose this one as I am aware of the misconceptions surrounding this topic. And I myself may have even unknowingly believed in them. This webinar was very helpful in enlightening me about the relationship of the church and state, particularly how this separation essentially exists to protect the people from the state. It becomes even more important now in the time that we are living 
in it to be aware of our rights as citizens, especially our freedom to express ourselves, as even this might be taken away from us in the coming years. Additionally, I admire pacific I admire pacifist route that the tr- that, that the church takes in um, combating combating social issues. It means a lot that the church does not turn a blind eye to the violence and abuse that the people face, contrary to people's idea that the church remains neutral in these types of situations. Having said all that, I want to ask a question to you, Father. As we all know, our current situation right now in the Philippines is reminiscent or reminiscent to one of the most terrible events that have happened in the country's history. Knowing what had happened back then and anticipating it now, will be will the church be actively combating the current administration or will it be trying to make peace with the current administration? Would we be seeing a rep- reprisal of the role that the church played during the People Power Revolution or is there a different approach that the church will be doing this time? So um, that ends um, the reaction of Miss Bea Bianca Obiedo. So, um, Father, do you need me to um, repeat the question? That's okay. okay. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Bianca, for that um, for the reaction for the question. Uh, <laughs> it's a very good question. Why? Because the church now, well, the church now is trying to, I'm sure the church is trying to heal a bit. I say, grab your frustration. Like, like all of you. We are humans, Bayan. We feel the frustration, especially for many of our leaders who really stick their reputation, their everything for this. Ah. What's the dilemma? Because now we live in attention. What's the dilemma? We are also pastors for the 30 million who voted for BBM. Um, it is not like your it's not like your Ed Uno, where you had 20 years of all those violations, and then there was no more elections, no more anything. The will of the people was disregarded, and only the will of one man stood out. Then we fought. But now, how do you address? to counter the will of 30 million. That now becomes the tension. Because I am not only a pastor to the 14 that voted. Um, So so that's still going to be, uh, and to be honest here in in Kagenda and Savior, I have office mates uh, in my office here that are that really came out in the open to vote for Bongo. So I have to be pastor to them as well. But at the same time, I also, when when the collection returns started coming in, I could not help but imagine also the feeling and face of a good friend of mine whose mom and dad were both tortured during martial law. And I can just imagine maybe how, how she must have felt to look at her mom and dad, how they must have felt. Everything for this country they loved so much and fought for now has elected to just bring back the son of the man who has scarred them for life. Ah, I have to pastor to her as well. So the church is in a tension. We are not in a crossroad. We're not going to make peace with administration. It's not a, but we have to heal our people, all sides. How we can do that and be consistent with our principles, I am, to be honest, still trying to, to, uh, to make sense of, but uh, but that's where we are. But the church, I pray, and as we have seen in the past how many months, 
I pray the church, a majority of the leadership, at least leadership. Feeling ko, sabi nga, di ba, what's that common refrain of, of VP Lenny now, di ba? Ang, kung ano ang, ang naimulat, hindi na maipipikit. So I will stay with that. At many, especially for you, for many of our students who went to house to house, and if you've seen the very terror in your right in front of you, then justice right in front of you, kayo na namulat, hindi na kayo maipipikit. Hindi nyo na maipipikit yung mga mata ninyo. We will start from there. And we will, we will fight for what should be. Of course, properly. But, um, but, uh, Um, the church will, and I'm praying, and at least many of us will, we will we will walk with you. But we'll have to make sure as well that we do not exclude. Last point ko dun sa ano nabiyanga. One thing kasi also that I've learned through the house to house, there's also some tinge of, there were some kasi who went house to house. Medyo condescending eh na parang tayo yung may alam, pupunta ka sa house, ikukonvince mo, parang sasabihin mo, ay bobo nyo, hindi nyo alam yung ginano nyo eh. That went counterproductive against us eh. Um, because it's as if na tayo lang may alam sa lahat. Tayo, we self-righteous lot na tayo lang yung may alam. At kayo, fake news believers, kayo bobo kayo. We, that was a deal breaker a lot of time a lot of times. So, we really also need to understand and then to be more more introspective in our in in how we we now build for 2023 and 2020 and uh, over 2025 and 2028. We have to make sure this is something that is proper. But the church will be there. We should be there. We will be there. I hope I was able to capture the two questions ni Bianca. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Father. Uh, that was very moving. Uh, I, I'm not sure if Bea is already in the Zoom meet, but the last time I checked, uh, she's, she's still experiencing internet connectivity issues. But I think this is still um, recorded and I think she'll see it naman, Father. As of now, Um, that what that ends her reaction. But thank you so much for the answer, um, and thank you, Bea, for that wonderful reaction and the wonderful questions. Um, at this point, I think we will be having another reactor. Um, we will be having Mary Charlene Thomas, uh, our third reactor for for today's ACP webinar. Um, hello, everyone. So I'm Mary Sherling Thomas, a third year um, business management honors program student. So from what I've gained, po, Father, from your talk is that um, yung sinabi mo po na yung, yung, yung involvement ng church sa state in regards rin po doon sa mga ano, um, involvement sa mga, um, mga campus ministry Then, naalala ko lang po kasi yung dito sa parish namin, um, na, may nilagay po silang parang tarpaulin na nakalagay is tapat dapat. And it also reflects po on what the church taught us. For example, mga, um, mga moral principles natin such as honesty, integrity, na yun dapat yung kailangan ng mga politiko. Like every person, not just poli- um, political candidates, but also every person. So, um it also reflects on me po na um, parang yung sinabi mo po na parang ang politics, like it is the highest form of charity. Parang it contradicts po on the Marcos side because when we saw or watched the Kingmaker, Marcos said that um, I mean, campaigning is like a chore. So parang sinasabi na labag ba yun sa kalooban nila? Like, it, is it just for the pleasure of them? Or is it because, like, parang meron ba silang pinaglalaban? Parang for me po, um, yung, yung pagbibigay mo ng, ng tulong sa ibang tao, hindi siya matatawaran kasi that's, that's an act of selflessness. And it's, it's just, just the same po sa tinuturo ng church na kung meron kang maibigay, 
ibigay mo kahit hiwala ka ganun ganun rin kasi it also reflects us as being part of a Jesuit university which is being men and women for others and having the Korea personalities so um i'm just gonna ask for this last question for the sake of others po um you mentioned po father that um the church is involved in relation to the dignity of the human person and natuturo rin po siya sa amin sa theology of course so what is po yung action ng church when it comes po sa pure justice system ng Pilipinas for example po sa case ni Laila de Lima Thanks uh, thanks uh, Mary Mary Charlene So thank you for that no uh, <laughs> listening to you Ganda nga Ganda nga pakinggan ng sabi, spin, sa sabi mo, hindi ba? Yan naman tulang simbahan. Hindi <laughs> saan tayo nagkamali eh. No? Kung yan yung tulang ng simbahan, naintindihan naman yata ng marami. Simple lang naman, maging tapat. Magbigay, maski, maski mahirap. Maging mapagmahal. Huwag magnakaw. Tama naman yan eh. Ano nangyari? Kaya parang pwede mong sabihin, di ba? Kaya ang dami hanggang ngayon, ang dami parang sasabihin, hindi, dinaya tayo, dinaya tayo. Ganun nga ba? O talagang... O talagang... hindi natin lang medyo ma matanggap na lata, hindi talaga tayo <laughs> hindi pala ganun kadali intindihan pag sabi mo kang magnakaw maging tapat ka baka iba nga talaga yung value system <laughs> Or, or, pukunta mo na ako doon bago ako punta sa tanong mo eh. Kasi ang, ang ganda ng sinabi mo eh, uh, Mary, ganda ng sinabi mo eh. Kaya, kaya parang ang, ang ano rin eh, parang na, actually, kaya nga minsan, naka, kaya nga nakakadismaya, di ba? Parang, hindi ba simple yan? Yeah. Hindi ba simple yan? Maging tapat ka. Tinuro ng simbahan. Not just Catholic faith, all our faith, all our churches are teaching that. Maging tapat ka, maging mapagmahal, mapagbigay, mapagparaya. E bakit tayo buboto sa isang taong hindi? Kita naman natin eh. Alam mo, hindi naman bobo yung Pilipino eh. Alam naman ng marami yan eh. Alam naman actually ng lahat yan. Pero ba tayo bumoto? Doon ako, doon ako hirap eh. Doon ako hirap unawain. Simbahan or, or hindi. Ang hirap unawain. Unless we are already, unless we're in a situation where our people can't even see beyond that because for them, kahit sino naman nilagay mo, lugmok sa hirap, kahirapan kami Kaya pag may magabot sa amin ng dalawang libo, kunin namin at ibuboto namin. Kasi ganun mangyari. At least may dalawang libo kong panawit para mabigyan ng pagkain sa pamilya ko sa susunod na limang araw. Kasi yung mga buwis at politikong yan, di naman babalik yan eh. Pagkatapos nilang kumamay kamay sa amin. Kahit sino naman nilagay niyo dyan eh. Mahirap pa rin kami. <coughs> and that's a... And that's also what happens even since the past... And that's what happened the past 30 years. We we have not alleviated the lives of our people. And the church, the church, we tried to alleviate the lives of our people as long as it also kind of alleviated our lifestyle. <laughs> so we are also, we've been also very inconsistent. 
Leila de Lima case, ilang pare lang naman, ilang pare ang sumugal para sa kanya. Iba? Wala. Atras. Um, kaya, anong pwedeng gawin sana ng simbahan ngayon? Sana mas maging maingay. Pero you will also notice that the church at the church also is kind of democratic sometimes to a fault. That is why your entire CBCP couldn't even come up with a unified statement because there were bishops strongly for BBM. How can they? <laughs> your, your guess is as good as mine. But um, long way to go. Long way to go. But, yeah, I mean, you will see that it's a pension field because you will see that It's not that some of the church leaders are are corrupt or what, but there are interests that we protect. <laughs> um, sadly, yeah. So then, talaga, ah, that's the difficulty, no? And that's why you disclaimer ko tao lang kami. Um, the hierarchy as a church, the church as a hierarchy. Kanya-kanyang interests din. And, and I guess that's also why people do not believe us anymore. Ah. So, so there, the, uh, I'm answering you in a, in a very pessimistic paradigm. So let me be more optimistic. So Mary, actually, so what we will do is that in the next, we will really have to fight hard. And the lay must rise. And the church as a hierarchy will be there to support. Um, lumabas na kami ng, a, a big part of the church 80% of the church nagbaba na kami ng baraha namin kung baga we have crossed the Rubicon if they if they're going to to be vindictive against us so be it gumuhit na kami gumuhit na tayo sorry gumuhit na tayo we will we will see this too We have to. Laila Dilema's case will be a test case for that, but we will we will have to. I hope I answered your question. Mary. Thank you so much, Father, for answering um, the question of Mary. And thank you, so, thank you, Mary, for your reaction. So at this point, thank you po ulit sa ating mga reactors. Napakaganda at napaka, nagpapasalamat po kami sa inyong mga reaction. At ngayon naman po, i-open na natin ang open forum para sa ating mga participants. I have now collected um, the questions that were sent and that were sent to our G-forms. Um, first, I think uh, there's a first question, Father. Ang question po na ito is, what is the role of the church when it comes to the vote buying culture in um, ca- in Philippine election campaign, electoral campaigns? Well, diba? um, you have a purest answer in a in a practical answer purest answer will always say you don't we don't we don't accept our votes to be bought diba? uh, when i was still in simbang lingkod nabuta namin kasi yung 2010 elections and um, that was one of our created module for for um, voters education ginagawa ko meron akong cup tapos Iikot ako sa mga tao. Sabi ko, may piso ka dyan. Lagay ka naman piso dito. Lagay ka naman piso. Tapos lahat ng mga tao maglalagay ng piso. Tapos pag nagay na lang piso dito, sabi ko, sige nga, oh, ito, bad paper. Drawing naman kayo kung ano yung magusto nyo sa buhay para sa pamilya nyo. May magdodraw. Sabi ko, may magdodrawing ng bahay, kotse, etc. Edukasyon ng anak. 
Tapos titingnan ko yan, tapos lalapit ako sa isa, titingnan ko yung drawing. Uy, bahay, ang ganda nito. Ito ba yung pangarap mo sa buhay? Oo. Oh, tapos pupunitin ko. Tapos siyempre, masyasyak, magagalit. Tapos kukuha ko ng barya mula sa sa cup ko. Bibigay ko sa oh. <laughs> sa'yo na yan. Para dun sa pangarap mo. Okay na ba yan? Siyempre, magagalit. Sabi niya, hindi. Pangarap po, bubunitin mo, tapos bibigay ko sa amin barya. And I would say, but that's what we're doing when we accept. Uh, papabayad lang tayo. Tapos, kinukuha rin naman sa kaba ng bayan, di ba? Uh, sisirain yung kinabukasan mo. Pero, uh, parang, ayun lang, parang ganun, di ba? Um, so, uh, para sa book, buying is, should not be, should not even, that should, it's it's a moral evil, in a sense. It's a moral evil. Um, and to accept, when we accept kasi, is also in a way, we're condoning. Okay, parang, Uh, kaya nga, di ba, um, vote buying in election is just the same as during incumbency na pupunta ka sa mayor mo at hihingi ka ng, ng solicitation para pang jersey ng basketball team mo. Yeah. Or pupunta ka kay mayor para humingi ng magsusolicit ka ng trophy para sa pageant ng Miss, uh, Miss, Aten- Miss Adnu diba? <laughs> or Miss Intrams. It's the same thing. You're allowing them, actually, ina-advance na nila yung boto, pagbili ng boto natin or pagbili ng prinsipyo na. Kasi dapat, they're not, that, that's not even supposed to be. Unless it's from their personal money. Okay, So so you will see that the culture, we we are actually, we're the ones perpetuating it. Kasi binibigyan natin sila ng, it's as if we're, ask, we're telling them, ah, kahit, pwede pala kami bilhin. So for me, that's the purest answer. Now, of course, there are those who would nuance their answers and say, hindi eh, naman kanila yan, eh, galing yan sa kaban ng bayan, tanggapin mo, sa'yo yan naman eh. And then vote according to your conscience. Kung kaya mong gawin yan, why not? Kasi ako, sabihin ko talaga, oh, pera natin yan. Lalo na kung galing sa mga Marcos, pera natin yan, niluluto tayo sarili natin mantika eh. So, tatanggapin ko yan, pero bubuto ako according to my conscience. But you will see that it's not that easy. Here, kagayang de oranong style nila. For example, Miss uh, si Daniel is, is a candidate. Ako, nasa kabilang partido ako. Uh, lalapitan ko si, uh, for example, let's say Mary is the one, is the candidate. And then, lalap, alam ko si, that, si if, if Daniel is medyo, alam ko na, ako, local community organizer ako. Nasa barangay levels, so alam ko. Kasi magkakapit bahay. Si Daniel, baka parang buboto siya for Mary eh. So pag medyo tagilid pa siya, ang kandidato ko si Alisa, sasabihin ko kay Daniel Dane, boto mo naman si Alisa, bigyan kita dalawang libo. Pag sinabihan ako ni Daniel, ayoko sir, kasi ayoko father, kay Mary ako eh. Ang gagawin ko, sabihin ko, sige din, ganito na lang, bigyan kita limang libo, huwag ka na lang bumoto. And that's still both buying eh. So, Can you imagine ako si Daniel, 5,000, kaya ko talaga ito ipabuhay sa pamilya ko limang isang buwan eh. And all I have to do is not vote. What's one vote? So I will not vote na lang. I'm not voting against Eliza kasi hindi ko naman ibuboto si... I mean, I will not vote... Uh, hindi ko hindi ako magkano kay Mary kasi hindi ko naman ibuboto si Eliza. Hindi lang ako bumoto. So, and what if manigas ako at sabihin ko, hindi, sige, tatanggapin ko, pero buboto ako. Ang ginagawa dito sa kagayan, may mga tao nagbabantay. Alam nila kung sino ka. And they're gonna say, binigyan ka ng limang libo, huwag kang bumoto. Kung hindi, patay pamilya mo, pupunta namin kasi tumanggap ka eh. So that's why it's not so easy to say na, sige, I'll accept it and vote according to my conscience because the politicians are also not stupid. They're gonna make sure that when they give, talagang ano yan, if I follow through nila yan. So, uh, I would rather, I don't accept. Uh, so, the church will always, I, uh, kaya nga, my own take is that, bakit ako magbubukas ng sarili ko sa utang na loob in a wrong sense? Yun. At least for that one. Thank you so much, Father. Um, That was a very relevant question rin po. Another relevant question is, is a change in type of government a viable option? Perhaps adapting a parliamentary type of government. 
Um, this was sent by an, an anonymous um, participant. Uh, I don't think the system of government will make will 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 make the difference. Our country has good laws. We have one of the best set of laws internationally. As in, let me tell you that um, we have very good laws. We have brilliant lawmakers. I mean, that past. Yung lawmakers kayo, never mind. But anyway, um, um, there was a time, and that's why, that's why, alam mo, you know when there's a very good lawmaker, pag kita mong kaya na ma-amend ang previous set of laws, ang dami natin set of laws na hindi talaga na overhaul because they are still the good ones. What's our problem? Implementation. Our problem is our executive cannot execute properly. No matter what system of government you put there, if it's a, par a parliamentary or a um, presidential, I don't think it's going to matter. Kasi it's not about the lawmaking. It's about their execution. Dapat nga ang presidential set of government ang mas malakas ang execution. That is why for me, and ang nakakatakot dyan, because sometimes the Filipino psyche might really need a benevolent, benevolent, strong hand. And that, that is the scary part. Kasi culturally, alam nyo, I mean, if I may go a little longer to hear a bit, a part of my reflection the past two days, may ganun eh. And I don't like it personally, but I'm trying to see, is it legit for me to, to see and to actually consider and slowly, slowly accept, even though I medyo nag, uh, ano ako, hindi ako ma, hindi ko masyado pa matanggap. You look at the pattern of the voting, especially of the locals. They went back to the old political families. A, a regression of our people that we've all went back to an alipin culture, an alipin mindset na hindi ako buboto ng kapwa ko, alipin. Ang gobyerno, ang pamumuno, para lang yan sa iilang mga pinagpalang mga amo. Kaya pag may lumalaban against sa political family, huy, mahiya ka naman, ambisyosa. Dito ka lang. Kasi tayong lahat langgam lang tayo. Ang pwede lang, pwede lang mamuno sa atin, yung mga pamilya ang angat sila ng mga Panginoong may lupa. Tayo mga alipin na. Because when I look at, I mean, I can't look at that simply, let's say for the church and state. Hindi. You look at Kaka in, in, in Dinagat. That's not church and state. You see her, she gave her life, everything. But you wipe out the entire, her political slate, wipe out by the Eklio. They did nothing. The budbun, the pera. And so all of a sudden, they all win. And I said, po, tiya, three, the last three years, Kaka, access to road, access to medicine, access to, she, she, gave, she was able to connect Dinagat Island, and they just wiped that out. And you realize, diba, we regress to that psyche. Eh. And that scares me. Hindi ko pa masyadong matanggap din, pero if you look at all, oh, most of it, political families won again. It's a super saying, ibigay mo na yan sa, sa ilang maliliit, at lahat tayo, lahat na lang tayo lumugmok sa kahirapan. Parang it's a, it's a reverse revenge of sorts, na parang lahat tayo maghirap. Kung meron namang mag, magpakasasa, yung ilang konti lang, and all of us majority, lahat yan tayo maghirap. Parang kumbaga, tablahan, and, and God, that scares me. But that's that's what we're, that's where we are. So I hope I was able to answer to that. Thank you, Father. Um, we have another question. Po. What kind of relationship does the church wants to want to build with a Marcos Duterte administration, given its track record and issues? Uh, 
Ang sa akin kasi, yun yung... I'm hoping kasi that we win away from a personality perspective na approach. Kasi ako, take away my bias, you know, pragmatically speaking, naisip ko at pinagdarasal ko. Kahit naman si Marcos yung presidente mo dyan, ang magpapagalaw sa Pilipinas bilang isang isang efficient machinery would always be your middle managers. Your career, uh, your career employees, your career government employees, they're the ones who will who will hold the fort regardless of who you put there. Um, um, so, I would rather na we will, na ang approach ng simbahan, we try to provide the support service for these career government employees, career government managers, middle managers, mm-hmm. para hindi sila madala sa pressure ng corruption ng taas. That they can continue to serve the country and that if they are going to be pressured, they will have so- civil society to back them up. Middle career um, ministers natin in the different government agencies that have been serving the public with their entire lives. Um, yan yung para sa akin dapat susuportahan ng simbahan at natin bilang civil society. Ang dami kayong magagaling na, na, na tao in government. We protect them, we help them out given this pressure of a corrupt leadership. We protect our people who are still in government, making sure that government work works properly. Sila ang dapat natin sustain. So for me, that's how we should approach it. Thank you so much, Father. Um, and another question. What do you think about the concept of choosing the lesser evil when given candidates to choose from? But none of them seem to be good, quote-unquote good. Isn't lesser evil not equal to good? Lesser evil is not equal to good. But if you want to be pragmatic, lesser evil is still lesser evil. Um, <clears throat> it is not equal to good. Kaya nga minsan, pag gusto mong bumoto, sasabihin mo, at for that particular election, sige, fine, lesser evil ka. Pero ang tanong, kontento na ba tayo na every three years na lang, magsishade tayo ng lesser evil? Hindi ba panahon na para mag-isip na, teka lang, baka kailangan ko nang may gawin para sa susunod na election may pangalan dyan na hindi lang lesser evil, pero pangalan dyan, good. Sige, matalo na matalo, pero at least nandyan yung pangalan na good. Rather, di ba, parang that, yun yung ano ko eh, na parang sinasabi na iba, ay, hindi naman mananalo yan. Eh, genius pala tayo eh. Kung gano'n naman tayo parati mag-isip, hindi talaga mananalo yan. Kung feeling mo hindi mananalo yan, hindi ipaglaban natin, talo ngayon, sige, laban pa. Ah, concrete example dito, <laughs> meron kami isa ditong counselor, ang talagang prinsipyo niya, bahala kayo sa buhay niyo, ni 20, hindi ako magbibigay. Parating talo, parating talo, this is her fourth <laughs> election. Finally, nanalo, number three. Because eventually you will see that someone who's consistent, mananalo rin yan. Pero we have to stay the course. Hindi tayo pwede ma-discourage lang. So fine, kung ngayong elections, all you see is lesser evil, fine. Pero hindi dapat tayo makontento sa lesser evil. Then we'll really have to fight to make sure that next time we have a good in that option. So sana yun yung trajectory natin. Sana. <laughs> Hoping for that day to come po. <laughs> but, um, yes. There's actually, Father, another question. Medyo nag, ano po siya? Nag shy away or nag divert siya from the election topic. Mm-hmm. This question is, will same-sex marriage, very controversial, forever be a no-no for the church? And do you think the church has a say on same-sex civil union? If so, then will same-sex civil union be okay with the church? May linya pa rin ba kung hanggang saan lang okay ang church sa mga ginagawang legal para sa LGBTQ+. Well, of course, you know. Um O nga. By elections tayo, elections tayo. Di. Well, I would think that the question still kasi falls within the church state relationship challenges. Um Ako, ang galing ng nuance ni Pope Francis. Pope Francis has nuance dati. Um, civil unions. 
the church has to respect precisely because um, whatever a state obliges, um, sometimes, especially the church as a, as, in a, as a citizen of that state must also have learned to be able, as long as it's not something that's uh, morally depraved, something that actually goes into the very core of our faith system. Um, so when you talk about same sex from the perspective of church, of course, um, because until um, the doctrines and the dogmas are there, as an institution, we have to stay with what, we have to remain faithful to what the inst institutionally is being spoused. Now, but if the, the state creates its own recognition, remember that what the church will only intervene if it is something that actually is de life detrimental. A civil recognition of union is not a, is not a deprivation of life. It actually, for me personally, you can even say it's actually a, an enhancement, an enrichment of life, of certain values. Then the church will have to respect the civil aspect of it. But as a church, we also have to spouse what the institutional um, teaching is all about. But that does not also disregard or that does not dilute the fact that church will always look at people individually, uniquely. Will always look at situations uniquely, individually. The church cannot have an, will never put an absolute blanket to things that happen on the ground. There is an absolute in terms of a blanket, in terms of institution, but on actual on the ground, it can never be applied uniformly as if you, our faithfuls are commodities in a manufacturing factory that you chunk them out as Catholico, 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 na identical, no. Church will have to deal with individual Catholics according to each where each one is, especially in terms of one's informed conscience. Because in Catholic Christian faith, remember that what we hold as most inviolable, most inviolable, is the primacy of conscience. So that a Catholic who has something to decide upon, decides upon that in the purest intention of his conscience or his or her conscience in prayer, in thought, in trying to get in, uh, whatever data about and chooses a certain action precisely after all this, the church cannot say, cannot condemn that because the church respects the very primacy of an informed conscience. So, so there, so... Um, you will, you, we need to nuance the civil and the church, but it also has to understand that in this aspect, this is not something that is life-threatening. Then you will see that even in the, the church must also find a way to respect whatever eventually that comes to. But personally, Father, do you think um, or... As an individual, po, do you agree that um, we should permit same-sex civil union? I will go to the same one thing. Kasi, um, because I belong to the hierarchy, because I'm ordained, I have to protect the, the, the teachings of the hierarchy of Mother Church. But that is my general um, sentiment. But that sentiment will also will also be very much dependent on how I will talk with individual faithfuls, with my sheep, with people I pastor, um, will also be different. So um, that is why I will still hope I will have to be, I have to be and I will be obedient to 
the general teaching of church. But that does not stop me from being able to pastor uniquely, individually, to individual cases. Safe pa, safe. Kailangan ba safe? May hirap na, record yan. Tay tayo dyan. Oh, Tay tayo ni Father Pastor. <laughs> Thank you so much, Father, for um, answering that question. Um, we how we now have um, the two la- the the two last questions. So, um, if you're planning sa mga participants natin na magsend pa, um, I'm sorry, guys, but we will now be um, o- we will now only address these last two questions. So, moving on, um, the first question po would be. Should we or should we not cut off people who are blind fanatics of blatant liars and fascists? Kung hindi sila namulat ngayon, kahit pa alam nilang lahat ang kasama ang ginawa ng sinusuportahan nila, do you think we should keep them and hope there is still a chance na mamulat sila in the future? Ako syempre. Mahirap man tanggapin kahit uminit na yung tenga ko at magbaliktan na yung mukha ko. Pero, um... Let me nuance that. The church will always be inclusive. To be honest, that's why I love the Catholic Church. It is so broken that we don't have the right to exclude people. <laughs> um, and under Pope Francis, you have seen how he, I mean, for the past three years, uh, three years, 2017 to 2020, to 20, 2017, 2019, uh, I would go to Rome every so often for the migrants and refugees section. Kita mo how he has really tried, galing is sweet na paraan, how to try to break down the traditional concept of the leadership, especially the Italian church. Uh, and Pope Francis will always, you know, will always be insist on Charity, mercy, compassion. We are an inclusive church because we ourselves, we, we are all products of second chances. Our faith is a faith of second chances. We were, we will, the beauty of our faith is precisely because we are rooted in precisely the Petrine tradition, Peter's tradition, Peter who was always the man with a big mouth and always can't even back up his, his profession. But he has always been a man of second chance. He's the epitome of second chances. Um, and that is why we cannot, even though ang tigas na ng, ng, ng puso ng tao, we cannot also judge to the end that God, God can work in mysterious ways way beyond our own understanding. So I would always feel that even to the last breath of a man, Miracles can still happen. We have to be inclusive. However, that also does not stop me from calling out the person for every actual fake news he he or she makes. That does not stop me from calling him or, or, or her out for every wrong thing, wrong objective thing that he or she is doing. I have to call him out. If I have to call him or her out every day, I will. Because that's also the part of loving. To make him under, him or her understand, yung actual na ginagawa mo yan, 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 yung factual mong ginagawang mali, I have to call you out for that. I will not exclude you from the church, but I have to call you out for the things that you do objectively. So that's where that, that the charity comes in. Kasi walang hiya, kung araw-araw ko ikaw parating sabihan na mali yan, aaraw-arawin ko na lang hanggat Baka hindi ka matuto hanggang mamatay kasi ginagawa lang araw-araw kong gagawin habang buhay. Pero yeah, that's where the loving comes in. Because I will always have to call out what you do as wrong. Because that is wrong. But I will not exclude it. I will have to separate the person from the act. The act is what's wrong. The person will always be good. Thank you, Father, for answering that question. Pero, um, at the back of my head, these conversations are like the casual conversations I would have with my batchmates. Parang meron pa rin pong sinasabi na parang ang hirap kapag ganun. It's an impossible or ang term po na with us friends, parang um, hanggang kailan raw kami magpapakamartir. <laughs> Ganyan. Diba? 
Sino ba nagsabing madali magmahal, di ba? Sa lahat na ba? <laughs> Kung madali magmahal, hindi yan pagmamahal. Kasi, basta. <laughs> Thank you, Father. So, ayan. Oh, guys, um, mahirap talaga magmahal. Kaya, go lang ng go. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Good after uh there's this is the last question po father um good afternoon po father i just want to ask po what do you think is the reason why bbm and sara got the highest vote for unofficial votes thank you marami akong pwedeng sagot diyan eh pero yun nga pero proseso ko pa ali yung feeling ko <clears throat> closest to that we will never well well highest vote because <laughs> 30 million voted for them. Uh, why? You can say part of it would be it is a vote of it is a rebellious vote against middle class. Alam mo sinong invested dito for Lenny? Middle class. Middle class and the youth. So this is a, sorry, youth of middle class, mostly. Young professionals that of middle class. Tayo ang tumaya dito. So it is actually a, kaya nga part of me is thinking, kaya nga that parang, and I'm really hoping I'm wrong, baka judge lang ako, di ba parang, I'm really hoping I'm wrong, na parang ang labas na, kahit middle class kayo, pare-pareho lang tayo dito. Ipoboto natin yung mga... It's really a vote of panabla. Feeling, kaya, although that's what I don't like, na parang baka nga vote ng panabla yan. I'm hoping it's not. A part of me is really, we have not taught history properly. So, historical, uh, aralin panlipunan natin, we, we bungled our chance. We have big, we, our our social studies. We have not taught history properly, and so you have now generations, na mabilis madala sa fake news because hindi rooted properly ang historical, um, ang pagturo natin ng history. Um, so maram, eh, eh, uh, that's one. I would think marami bumoto kay Bibi at Sara kasi para sa akin ang educational system natin problematic. Very, very, very problematic. Yan yung kailangan natin ayun. Yes, Father. Actually po, um, not only the educational system, parang through or during the course of the election and the campaign, parang nagkaroon po talaga ng, ng manifestation or lumabas po talaga na yung mga basic commodities such as health, education, hindi po talaga, lumabas talaga na hindi maganda ang sistema dito sa Pilipinas. Kaya nga po, um, hope, hoping na in the long run, it will be addressed and it will be effectively um, reach its resolution. So um, I think that's the last question, Father. Uh, before I end the open forum, parang uh, nagpapabigay po ng... I know po, um, some of some comments from the staff na, and also the participants na mag, thank you Raupo Father for for the processing and the consoling and the counseling session. Uh, very needed Raupo. So ayan. Thank you so much Father. And now guys, that ends our open forum. So um, can I have Eh, can I see virtual claps everywhere, virtual hearts? Kasi kailangan na kailangan natin yan. Salamat sa lahat ng nag-participate na sa ating open forum. So, yun na po ang ating mga um, questions. So, unfortunately, we have to close the open forum. Thank you so much sa lahat ng nag-participate once again. So, Father IJ, thank you so much po again for being with us today and for giving us a very relevant and enlightening talk. To show our gratitude to you, we would like to present the Certificate of Appreciation. So, citation reads, the Office of Student Affairs, Ateneo de Naga University presents this Certificate of Appreciation to Father Ismael Jose, 
or IJ, B. Chan Gonzaga, in grateful recognition of his expertise and service as resource speaker in the Alternative Class Program, Understanding Church and State in Politics, Rights, Laws, and Challenges, held on May 11, 2022. Given this 11th day of May 2022 at the Ateneo de Naga University, City of Naga, Philippines. Signed by Mr. Rodolfo S. B. Virtus Jr., Director of Student Affairs, Ms. Janet Libadong Badilla, Executive Director for Mission and Identity, Dr. Alfredo C. Fabay, Vice President for Higher Education, and Father Roberto E. N. Rivera of the Society of Jesus University President. Thank you so much again for being part of this event, we w- which would not be possible without you. Um, Father, at um, at this point, we would like to request a photo opportunity with you. Paul. So, ayan guys, um, sa mga kayang mag-open ng kanilang mga cameras, mag-open na po tayo. Okay, for a photo op. So, ayan. Once again, everyone, please open your cameras for our photo opportunity. Okay po, um, I would just like to ask the staff, sino po ang mag, sino muna po ang mag, uh, facilitate ng photo op and magtatake ng photo? Si Sir Vons? Hi Sir Vons! Okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay. thank you Sir Vons. Uh, three slides po to, so ano lang, kailangan lang mag-smile lang. Medyo, wala, kaya naman natin ang mga muscles niyo. Alright, okay, sige. Start na ba ako sa first slide? Okay, uh, one, two, three, smile. Okay. Second slide, smile lang po. One, two, three. Last slide, one, two, three. Alright, thank you very much. Po. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sir Vons. So, ayan. Thank you so much um, once again, Father IJ, for being here with us and for sharing um, this very enlightening talk. So, um, to the participants, I uh, before you go, Father, do you have anything um, to say po, to our participants? Just to say thank you. Thank you for the invitation and um, keep safe always. Stay the thank course. You, thank stay you. the course. Be, yes, uh, stay the course. Stay the course. Stay the course. Thank you, Paul, and um, please stay safe as well. So now to our participants, um, this for this ACP webinar, please do not forget to fill out the evaluation form um, so that you can receive your e-certificate. We will be flashing the, the evaluation link and also the QR code. So scan na lang or access the link that is posted. Again, um, I would just like to remind everyone that please make sure that you are writing the correct information para po tama ang yung mga names na ilalagay sa ating e-certificate. So again, we are grateful for your participation and we hope to see all of you in the future ACP webinars or workshops. Once again, my name is Daniel Filio. This ends the webinar, Understanding Church and State and Politics, Rights, Laws, and Challenges. Thank you and good afternoon. Recording stopped.